White Power. That is the name of the podcast I'm going to be reviewing on Waking Up by Sam Harris. This is the episode with Christian Picciolini. So this was a really interesting Waking Up podcast because he has Christian Picciolini on who was a former neo-Nazi. So now Christian spends his days actually counseling youth, counseling troubled men, I mean it's mostly men, um, from leaving neo-Nazi and white supremacist organizations. I believe he was basically a self-described uh, white supremacist until he was 28 years old or something like that. And he tells a really interesting story, which is, I think, important. He says when he was 14 years old, he wasn't getting a lot of attention from his parents. He was hanging out in some alleyway. He was smoking a joint and some skinhead comes up to him and smacks the joint out of his hand and says, that's what they want you to do. That's what the communists and the Jews want you to do so you'll be docile. And he says that at that point in his life, he didn't know what a communist was. He didn't know what a Jew was and he didn't know what the word docile meant, but that was the first time in his life maybe any adult had paid attention to him and cared, seemed to care about his well-being. So Christian talks a lot about the recruitment techniques that people like this use are very similar to gang behavior. This is really just another gang. And he really shed some really fascinating insight into how these white supremacist groups work. These techniques really work best among people who are at their most vulnerable and who don't already perhaps have strong opinions. Christian makes a lot of comparisons to white supremacist organizations and Al Qaeda and ISIS and how there's really in many ways not much of a difference at least in terms of their recruitment techniques. To me probably the most interesting point of this podcast is when he talks about the normalization of the modern day white supremacist movement. He gives some really interesting concrete examples of this, how they've normalized white supremacy in America and you know what let me just play this clip so you can hear it for yourself. I can tell you that 30 years ago, we recognized exactly what you're saying, that we, you know, we were a small group that was too visible. And we said, you know, these, these average American white racists who we want to recruit are getting turned off by the fact that we have swastikas on our foreheads, right? Or we have boots or shaved heads and we're talking, you know, very, um, you know, much about foreign kind of politics mm. and, you know, national socialism. So we made a very concerted effort uh, 30 years ago to normalize. We said we're going to ditch the shaved heads and the clan robes, and that's still around, but for the most part not. Uh, and we're going to trade in our boots for suits. We're going to go to college campuses to recruit where people uh, are away from their families for the first time, are forming new opinions, may feel marginalized. We're going to get jobs in law enforcement. We're going to go to the military and get training, and we're going to run for office. And that's around the time that you know, we see David Duke kind of get rid of the robe and wear the suit. And here we are 30 years later, and it's, it's very much that is the representation of, of the white supremacist movement that we're seeing today. Mm. You know, the polos and the khakis and the, and the haircuts. And, and we, we decided to even take the language and make it more palatable, right? So instead of saying, you know, the global Jewish conspiracy that controls us all, we just started calling it globalization. Uh, and we started saying things like, you know, the liberal media instead of the Jewish media, terms that now some people are calling dog whistles. To me, they're a bullhorn. I hear these things, and, and in context, um, I know exactly what's being told when, you know, they're showing a picture of George Soros's face, who is like enemy number one to the far right. Um, but it has seeped into mainstream society where I think a lot of people are identifying with some of the same things that, that these white supremacists are, but don't know that they're being led down that path. Right. Because it is a ramping up process, uh, you know, a normalization, and then bam, once you're in, you know, you've already got the stigma. They know you can't leave. They know that, you'll, that you will get the threats, that you will be outed. So what do you have to go back to? It's like drugs. Mm. It's like a drug dealer. So there you have it. If you have any interest in race, politics, terrorism, violence, and really just the progression of society, I think you're gonna find this podcast really interesting. Sam Harris does a really great job 
letting Christian tell his own stories, not casting judgment, and also opening things up to the audience. This is filmed in front of a live uh, audience of a couple hundred people, so we get some really interesting questions from the audience as well. All right, podcast people, I hope you guys check out this episode. Drop a comment below, and I'll catch you on the next one.